Hello there and welcome to my channel. In today's video I'm going to be going through a watercolour painting that I've created because I wanted to go over some of the watercolour techniques that I didn't get to cover it off in my last video. So this is the painting that I've done today and we'll go through some techniques. First off, I wanted to cover the supplies I'm using today. So this is my Strathmore Mixed Media Sketchbook. I've done quite a few watercolour pieces in here, so this paper is really nice for using watercolour on, but I'm also going to be using some coloured pencils and a white gel pen later as well, so this one is great for that too. The watercolours I'm using today are my Daniel Smith watercolours. This is my custom palette that I've created with the watercolours that I have. And I've got quite a few colours in here, although today I'm going to be sticking mainly with blues, browns, greens. I've also got three paintbrushes out here. I've got a fine, they're all round brushes. This is quite a large one. This is to do larger areas. This one here is great for blending. This is an uh, imitation sable brush that I have. And then I've got my Neef brush here as well, which has a nice fine point. The next tool I'm going to show you here is just my masking tape, which I'm going to use to mask the edges of my painting. This will help me get a nice crisp border around my painting. I've got two jars of water here, one to clean my brush and one just to keep some clean water. It's very handy to have clean water when you're picking up your next colour, um, just so you don't contaminate your colours. And I've also got my hair dryer here, just so that I can dry my paint in between layers. And I've also got my best friend here, my paper towel. Very, very handy for painting. These are just some Prismacolor colored pencils and my white gel pen, which I'm going to be using just to add a bit more texture, a bit more detail at the end of the painting. What I wanted to show you next was how I got my sketch onto my mixed media paper to paint. So what I've done is I've scanned my sketch and printed it, and then I've attached it here into my sketchbook with a bit of masking tape. So what I've done is I've used some red transfer paper uh, underneath my sketch to transfer the drawing. So this is what I've used here, it's the wax free transfer paper in the red colour. It also comes in white and blue and yellow, um, but I just have the red here. So I've just got a piece that I've cut down to about A4 size and I just basically place it underneath my sketch red side down so then I can just get my regular ballpoint pen and then just trace over all my sketch lines. This transfer paper doesn't require a lot of pressure, so it does leave quite a bold red line. What I've done is I've actually gone over the entire sketch with my kneaded eraser here, just to pick up some of that excess red. I don't want it too bold, I just want to be able to just see my lines so that it's not too noticeable once the painting is complete. Okay, let's get started. So firstly, I'm just applying some masking tape around the edges here, just so I get that nice white crisp border. It also helps keep the page a little flat as well. I've mixed a blue color here as a to be a flat wash. Um, unfortunately, I accidentally missed filming the two coats of the flat wash that I did, um, but the rest of the painting has been recorded. So I've added some white clouds with some white watercolor, and then I'm adding some white gouache. Gouache is an opaque watercolour, that's the best way to describe that, and I will go over and add a little bit more later on as well. And I'm starting out in the grassland here with a just a rough flat kind of wash with random kind of green colours into the grass. And then I'm adding some salt to add a little bit of texture. So what you do is you apply your watercolour, once it's still wet, just add some regular table salt. What I'm doing now is I've dried it and I'm using a brush to get rid of some of that salt. Um, that didn't work very well, so what I've done is I've actually go in and, and rub my finger against the page to remove that salt. What this does is it applies a... Um, Basically the watercolour settles around the salt and you get these really interesting textures in it. I do end up painting over most of this, but this is just something a little bit fun to do as well. 
just make sure that your painting is dry before you start to remove the salt very important otherwise it might tear your paper so I'm just going to continue removing this salt and then I'm going to brush away all of the salt so it's no longer on the page so you can see a little bit of that texture there as I said, I go over most of it later, but it's just something fun if you were doing some kind of textured scene, like some rocks or something like that. It might be really interesting to add that texture in. So now I'm just going to go in and start painting the bear. Um, I'm just using a few mixtures of brown colors here, using the darks to establish my shadows uh, and the darkness underneath the fur as well, and just using the lighter colors in the highlighted areas. When I pick up the colour with my paintbrush, if it's too watery, I dab off a little bit of the excess onto my paper towel. So I kind of alternate between using very wet watercolour and a more dry brush technique. So this, using a dry brush technique is really good when you're painting fur. Um, so you can get those nice brush sort of textures in there. And now I'm going to move on to the woman in the painting. So first off I'm starting out with the skin just using some uh, yellow ochre and burnt sienna and I'm just adding in some shadows and just establishing the lines so I know what I'm painting here. And with the hair here I'm also drawing in the, some of the lines so that I know where I'm painting or know where the hair is and I'm going to do a couple of coats um, so that I can get this natural dark brown black colour. Um, I've actually used a photo reference for this piece that I've based the painting off of. Um, it's a very loose interpretation of the photograph but uh, I think it's really great to use references when you're painting otherwise your brain's trying to make up information that you may not have and if you don't have the skills to be able to do that because not everyone does um, it's really good to use photo references the photo reference I've used today is from a really wonderful photographer I found on Instagram her handle is olga.berentseva, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, I'll have a link in the description if you want to check out her photography. I highly recommend that you do, she has some really great work on there. For the dress here I've used my Daniel Smith Indigo colour and I've added the shadows in with a pure version of the paint and I've dried it and then added a watered down version of the indigo in the lighter areas of the dress just so I can get that variation. Watercolour is really versatile that way that you can get a lot of tones out of just the one colour. I'm going for a loose painterly look. I don't want this to look exactly like the reference that I've used, otherwise you may as well just look at the photograph. Um, I want this to look like a painting, like an illustration, so that's what I'm going for here. Um, I just keep using my hairdryer in between just to dry off the paint so I don't smudge anything and I can keep working. So I'm going back in with that white gouache, adding some more clouds. Um, I just wanted to uh, create the illusion of depth in the painting as well. Um, you'll notice that I jump around quite a bit. I've mixed some of that white gouache in with my green watercolour paint so that I can add a bit more grass in. I want it to look like the grass is in, in front of the, um, the woman and the bear. So that's what I've done there. And now I'm just going in with some coloured pencils just to add a little bit more um, definition. I use my kneaded eraser just to pick up some of the colour. Sometimes the coloured pencil adds a little bit more colour than I would really want. So that's what I'm doing there as well. And I'm blending out, um, especially on the skin, with a light cream colour. The coloured pencil does put quite a bit of texture. Um, and on the skin I didn't really want that texture. I don't mind so much in the bear because there's a lot of fur there going on. Um, but on the skin I want it to be nice and smooth.
continuing adding a little bit more detail with the green colored pencils here I've used around four different shades just got adding in some of the blade of the grass um, I attempted to use my white gel pen to add the um, little trim around the cuff of the dress there but it wasn't working against the wax pencils there was a little bit too much build up so I ended up going in with my white gouache and I'm also going to add some little birds in the sky um, I went over it with my kneaded eraser because they seemed a little bit too bold I just wanted a very faint um, indication that there were birds in the sky I wanted them to look like they were in the distance as well um, I'd like to note that my white gel pen did work in the grass as I'm doing here it was just there was a little bit too much build up um, just around the cuff that it wouldn't work and that's why I've used my gouache there And my last step in the painting is just to add my signature and the year and I've just used a um, pigment fine liner to add that in once the painting is completely dry and we're all done I go in and remove the masking tape one tip I do want to give here is just to be very gentle with removing your masking tape I actually right here just tear a little bit of the paper so it's kind of removed the top surface of the paper just a little bit not too noticeable so it's not too bad but it can rip if you're not gentle um, so just be very careful there kind of try to pull it back against itself that will help you get that nice crisp edge So here's the final painting. Um, I really hope you've enjoyed today's video. I hope you found it helpful and that there were some helpful tips here. Um, if you haven't already, I'd love for you to hit that like and subscribe button. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. And thank you again for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day.